World War I was one of the most bloodiest wars in US history. The cause contributing to the war is militarism. The war built up their armies and wanted to show off their power. Take the arms race for example. Alliances Another major force that drove the war. Nations prepared for the war by forging powerful alliances in which they hoped would give them the edge in the war. Imperialism Well, let's just say competition was sizzling hot for those countries seeking to take over existing colonies. Nationalism. It will be very candid for anyone to say that World War I was caused by nationalism. When the world was clear in Germany, people literally burst out on the streets celebrating in France and Britain. World War I, it was the Great War, the war to end all wars. But was it inevitable, as many have argued? Did Germany pose such a threat that Britain had no choice but to send millions to fight and die? In a controversial new book, Oxford historian Neil Ferguson argues that the war was nothing less than the single greatest mistake in modern history. It's called the pity of war. In your book, you challenge the dominant thinking about uh, the First World War, thinking that's been embraced by most historians. I mean, at the very start, I mean, you claim that, that World War I may be the single biggest mistake in history, and that, in fact, it was Britain, not Germany, that was responsible for escalating a, a continental into a world war. What's your evidence for that conclusion? Well, the evidence really uh, comes from two main areas. Um, one is, of course, uh, the evidence relating to German policy and German objectives. Uh, and the other is the evidence uh, relating to, to Britain's decision. And one of the most important points I try to make in, in The Pity of War is that uh, there isn't a necessary connection between the German decision uh, to risk a war on the continent, uh, which is mainly directed against Russia when you look at the documents, hmm. and the British decision to intervene. Um, that that decision is a very last-minute decision on the part of the British government. It's very open. It's by no means predetermined by great laws of history. Um, in fact, it's a decision taken on a Sunday afternoon by tired and nervous politicians, the majority of whom go into the decisive meetings on the 2nd of August 1914, thinking that Britain will stay out. So one of the things I wanted to try and establish uh, in the book was a, that there wasn't a German bid for world power, that Germany's motives were in many ways uh, based on a sense of weakness and were directed mainly against Russia, and that therefore the German objective was limited to a continental showdown. And secondly, that the British decision to intervene, which I think did turn this continental war into a global war, mm -hmm. was on a knife edge and might well have gone the other way. Well, the, the conventional wisdom uh, is that you know, this was the war to end all wars, and that what Britain was doing was following a pattern of behavior from the imperialist days, which was intervening to stop aggression, aggression that threatened uh, the rampage of, uh, of, of the, the, the continent. You find evidence to the contrary. Well, I think one of the things that's most interesting is the way in which historians always assume that a very great event must have very great causes. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I try and do in the book is to analyze the traditional great cause explanations. Was it imperialism, for example, right. as you just suggested? Was this an inevitable confrontation between two or more great imperialist powers, but principally b between Britain and Germany? When you look at the story of relations between Britain and Germany around the globe, the classic imperialist argument begins to flake because it becomes pretty clear that wherever uh, British and German interests came into um, collision, pretty quickly resolution was achieved. That the war in that sense wasn't a war about empires. That, for example, the war that often is uh, 
uh, imagined over navies. It's very often argued that the First World War is due to the construction of a German navy. Um, this is a, a myth. The, the whole arms race at sea was over by 1912 because the Germans realized that they couldn't compete financially mm -hmm. with Britain's uh, battleship building program. So you gradually go through these great causes, and uh, on close inspection, uh, they all seem to me to be found wanting. And you're left with this strange residual explanation, uh, which was the one the British Foreign Office generally trotted out. And it went like this. The tradition of British foreign policy is that no one power should dominate the continent. Uh, that is why we fought against Louis XIV, uh, and that is why we fought against Napoleon, and Kaiser Wilhelm II is clearly the heir to this tradition of would-be continental hegemon, and therefore we must intervene. Now, historical arguments like that can be very seductive, simple, clear analogies that, in a way, prevent you having to think too deeply about mm -hmm. your options. It all started with the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand by the Siberian Black Hand Terrorists. Militarism One of the main causes of World War I is militarism. Militarism meant a rise in military spending, a founders for forces solution to problems, and an increase in military naval forces. The Arms Race The Arms Race was where all the countries were blown up their military power. No country wants to be behind another country in military form. Alliances World War I consisted of many alliances. The two opposing groups that fought in World War I were the Central Powers, Germany, Austria-Hungary, Bulgaria, and Turkey, and the Allies, an alliance that grew from the three members of the Triple Entity, Britain and the British Empire, France and Russia. The United States did not join the war until 1917, after a German naval attack on the American passenger ship, the Lusitania. Had there been no alliances, the war would have been between Austria, Hungary, and Serbia. Imperialism All countries involved in the war were seeking to take over existing colonies. The British Empire extended over five continents, and France had control of large areas of Africa. Nationalism 
Nationalism means being a strong supporter of the rights and intersection of a nation, kind of like patriotism. It is safe to say that World War I was caused by nationalism. When the war was declared in Germany, people burst out in the streets celebrating in front of Britain. Everyone down from the citizens up to the government were preparing for war. In this way, nationalism led directly to war.